Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome back to the All or Nothing podcast with myself, Billy Moore, and today's special guest, once again, is Rusty Fehrman. Rusty, welcome. Rusty, blue team leader, SAS, former, a lot of things, so let's go down that path. <laughs> well, thanks for the intro and thanks for the um, invite back, been a long time. Um, I've been looking forward to it. You always said I would come back again one day, yeah. um, even though we've moved. Uh, down south, a long drive up today. But for those who don't know, tomorrow is the anniversary of the Iranian embassy siege 43 years ago. Tomorrow is the day that we rescued the hostages, all 19 of them, down in London. For those who remember Operation Nimrod, the Iranian embassy siege. Yeah, I must say I remember it well. I was seven years old, but it was obviously... No big news back then in the 80s because it was world exclusive, you know, and it was heroic what, you know, the SAS did back then. And since then, you've gone on to, you know, like when I say former, everything you've gone on to be, you know, you were a footballer, you were, you're an author, you, you know, you've done many things since then, haven't you? Done a lot. Um, I think it's better to keep busy especially when you started as young as I did, being forced into the military at 15. Um, I've worked all my life, <clears throat> and I think I'll probably end up working because I enjoy it. Yeah. And, you know, all those years that have gone by, I've learned so many lessons which I'm passing on these days, and uh, people are getting benefit from it, and they keep coming back for more, you know. Um, so, as we say, life goes on. Yeah. And you have to take each day as it comes, but plan ahead. And we have plans um, for what we're going to do. We just come back from America. Um, we're out there as a guest, as a guest speaker out there, invited back again to the SWAT teams again next year. So there's a big chunk in the middle there where there's an awful lot to cover. Where do you want to start, Billy? Let's start with the, what we left off and we didn't continue from the last podcast when we were talking about the drums, the deep underground military bases because that really interested me and I noticed in the comments that people said you know you kind of dismissed that and moved on Bill right because I wasn't really aware of what all that was about and then I started to research it and google it and I, and I found it was quite limited on social media all the um, because of the secrecy I suppose you know there's a lot of um, you know abroad in different countries America Sri Lanka everywhere there was different underground military bases, and I was like really curious as to what these were, and that's why I got back in touch. I said, Let, "Let's sit down and let's talk about yeah you know, um, your experience and what you know of them." Well, all I what I know is exactly what you did, but I I know people in the know, if you like, which is different than reading the newspaper. Yeah, definitely, it's you don't hear it on the news because you don't want you to hear it, but because it's happening deep underground military bases. Um, DUMBS, D-U-M-B-S for short, um, basically they're all over the world and interconnecting tunnels, continent to continent, people won't even believe it, they don't want to believe it, they're not allowed to believe it because it's not being told to them, but you will find stuff on DUMBS and I, anybody who can go out there and find stuff I don't know about it, feel free to send it in because I have a real interest in it. Um, why is it there? Um, you, over the years, it's been developed. Yeah. How did they get those tunnels made in the first place? How long had they been going? Um, that's another great question. I don't know the exact answer to that. But what I do know is that under this uh, underground, continent to continent, 
there is a vast network, including super fast trains, cities, the whole lot underground. You can find out stuff about it, but you have to search. And I've done a podcast on it, only a short one, um, not too long ago, to put into perspective, but nobody wants to sort of go any further than that for some reason. Um, what's the secret? Mm. You know, why is it happening? Why do we need it? Well, there's an awful lot of reasons, and I can't pinpoint all of them and say I'm correct on all of them, yeah. but there's a lot of trafficking that goes underground. It's no coincidence that, you know, uh, some people say, well, the water is coming down. Actually, some of the tunnels that have been filled in with water, where does the water come from? It has to go, water's only got one way of going, hasn't it? It'll go wherever the let out is. So the dumbs, as we call them, are there. And what I'm trying to find out now is the exact reason. But I do know, and I have got some information, that um, going back into the States a couple of years ago when Donald Trump was in power, yeah. that a number of forces were trained in fighting underground American forces. Um, I'm still trying to figure out and get the answers on who they are exactly, but I've done it up to now. It's happening, and as soon as I get the next chapter on it, I'll be in touch. It's, it's because it is yeah. fascinating. It is fascinating. It's and just... people need to know what's going on with this planet. Yeah, because it's like we're just living in a different world here, are we? Above ground, you know, unaware of these cities. And the fact that you said to me last time, because I could not get it out of my head when you said to me there were super fast trains, right, that mm. go faster than a bullet, right, f from continent to continent. Underground. And I was thinking, wow, so that's like, you're, 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 obviously we know that you can go on the sea and build yeah. tunnels, but like, it's like the, the link, you yeah. know, from continents, not Europe. You know, uh, you, you're talking like, worldwide here, by yeah. the sounds of it. But you can also see that there is a way of looking on, um, there's a mapping system, I don't have it with me, <clears throat> there's a mapping system of where these explosions take place underground. You know, they need to do that to, you know, connect stuff up. You, you, you know, you need to move stuff and get it moved. The fact is that predominantly a lot of them are almost the same across the world, about 10 kilometers, and they're marked at 10 kilometers underground. Mm. Why is that? Because they have to get the connecting um, tunnels correct. They have to be able to know where they go in, which this day and age isn't too hard, is it, with the with what they've got available? No. And, you know, it, it's for a reason. And, you know, I will find out the um, full reasons behind it, mm. but it's taken time with everything else I've been doing. But it's never gone away, and it never will go away. And one day, people will wake up and say he was right. Yeah, because the, when you, you, you when you mentioned before about like you know, the Americans training special forces basically to go to fight underground, well, it obviously kind of means that like they've got enemies who are actually underground doing the same thing. Uh, very possibly, I don't know the other side of it, but I do know what I've been told by some serious contacts. Yeah. Now, you know, I've got no reason to disbelieve any of that, and you can find out stuff on it, but it's very, very hushed up. And the reasons it's hushed up is obviously, who wants panic? Well, would it cause panic? I don't know. The fact is that we all live on this world and we should know what's going on. Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the idea of would it cause panic, I mean, personally, it's like... you. It's something you'd probably expect anyway with a military base, wouldn't you? You know, underground. But it's like, what is it actually used for? Well, that's that's part of it. Yeah. You know, why why are they all there? Why are they all interconnected? Yeah. Um, you know, across the planet, um, there's obviously a reason, a full reason for it, and you would expect this now to have been going on an awful long time to have got where it is. 
But one day it will come up, really. I think, like, and it has to. I think, like, we live in a really, really small world now, right? Because there's a lot of people like waking up to a few things over the years, where you know, the whole planet <coughs> and the whole like uh, demeanor of the people in society has changed because you've got to be politically correct. Correct. You've got to. You can't say this. You can't say that. You know, you can't stand up for yourself. Now, it, it, it angers me, right, Rusty? And I'm glad. I'm glad you're opposite me here because it it angers me when when someone says something and they take offence to it, right? Well, you said that, and I really took the, uh, an offence to that, and it's like all of a sudden you're the t- you're you're made to feel bad because you're, because you're just speaking your mind. So you're not even allowed to speak your mind, and this is what you know. When I hear about yourself and what you said last time, is that you, you you know you value you know your own integrity and you're sharing you know the information that you've been shared with someone, and it's not you know you got no reason not to believe it. Yeah, well. I don't get paid for doing that. Mm. I do it because I feel that this is my country. I fought for it. Yeah. I was in the British military from age 15 to 42, 27 years mm. in the commandos, in the SAS. I fought for this country. And I will say what I want to say. say and I have say. said what I've said. And I'll carry on doing that because I want to be in my freedom of speech. Yeah. Um, and I don't want anybody, nobody, telling me what I can and can't say, because that isn't me. The fact is that anybody should be able to say, within reason, you know, um, I know we've got all these um, different ethnics, and but it doesn't matter. What they're trying to teach nowadays and everything else is going against what a lot of people, especially of my era, stood up and fought for. Yeah. And a lot of people here today, because of the likes of people like me and the people before me and the military before them. So what did they fall for? So it's like a waste. The answer is, yeah. it's wasted. Yeah, it's wasted. And, you know, I think everybody has got a right to their opinion. Um, not everybody's going to like mine, but I don't care. I don't like some other people's, and they probably don't care. And then you've got the woke brigade who just want to pick up anything. You know, you, you can't even have a ploughman's lunch now. You know that. Down in Devon? No, why is no, that? No, you have to have a plough person's lunch. You that is fact. Messing. I'm, I'm telling you. It's a this plow is where a plough person's lunch. You're not allowed. No. You can't have man of the match at football. You probably know that. What a fireman. You, you know, it's... <laughs> It's, what was it called? I was laughing the other day at it. It used to be man of the match. And now it's not. You, you can't have man of the match because they've got female football now. But you know what, have a female man of the match because it's all there nowadays, isn't it? You know, it's just beyond. What do you do nowadays? It's a thing we just live in an all the senses of Wales where just people... Just don't fix something that's not broken. It's simple. Yeah, it's... It, yeah. You know, I've noticed a lot lately and it's like it's changing. Yeah. Massively, you know, uh, the, the the narrative and the dialogue and the way we communicate. Even, you know, the kids, you know, my kids coming home from school and, you know, you, you're talking, talking to them, you're thinking, where are you getting this from? Yeah. You know, non-binary and you know, gender neutral. I was like, I haven't got a fucking clue. I need to take a course in understanding what you're talking about because it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, and I'm arguing with them and then it becomes like us and them. And then you become the enemy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you can't win. For losing. Well, it's the kids that are, gonna, um, that are growing up through the system. Yeah. What do they make of it? It looks like nobody really cares about that. No. We'll teach them it anyway. And they can go home and tell the parents what they've been taught. Yeah. The parents get a bit upset because they don't want it to be taught. But nobody gets a say in it. They go ahead and do it. Now, you can't tell me that's right. No, and, 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 and I, can, I can imagine how like, upset it makes you feel after what you've been through and the men you've lost and the men and the predecessors before you that have gone through all this, you know, to, to, to just have it wasted on fucking oversensitive egos who just want to change the dialogue and the narrative it, of everything. It's just gone beyond the joke, you know. Um, a lot of the people that 
you know, that I don't knock around with them, grown up myself and served with. Yeah, some of them take it on the chin, yeah, but they've been through it. But most of them want to have a say in what's going on, you know, because it's changed so quickly, if you think about it, Billy. Yeah. It doesn't seem very quick, but it is. Well, One fast, minute yeah. you're teaching this, the next minute you've got the kids like, you know, and they haven't a clue what's going on. So can you imagine now going to a, going into a classroom teaching young soldiers or cadets or whatever, now with this new this new narrative? It 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 feel really peculiar, wouldn't it? You wouldn't it wouldn't be familiar at all to you. Well, well, as I've said, you know, nowadays it's all right hindsight, but I've been there. I wouldn't join the army mm. again. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Not from what I've seen, the changes, not at all. You know, um, I didn't want to go in the first place, but I ended up 27 years in the military. But now I've seen what's going on, and I've seen, I've, I've done articles in the newspaper as well. You know, the physical test you have and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I could pass it now in the state I'm in. Yeah. You know, and you're not allowed to shout at them. You're not allowed to shout at them. You've got to treat everybody exactly the same, which I agree with. But when you look at what you've been through and think, well, without that, it wouldn't have made me maybe who I am. Yeah. But now they've taken it all away. You know, the, you, it's quite happy nowadays to have um, soldiers with 38-inch 38, 38 waists. You know, it was on there, documented, you know, obese in, in the military. Um, what, what's wrong with them? Mm. You know, and you can't, if they don't want to get out of bed in the morning now, and certainly over the last couple of years, all they have to do in the military is say, I don't feel well. And all they have to do is stay, they can stay in bed and phone up the doctor. Well, that, that was never the case. You know, you get paid uh, to do a job. But quite happily now, just, oh, I don't feel well today. Yeah, nine times out of ten in the military, it's a hangover. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but that's where it's heading. You know, we we need we haven't got a capability, in my opinion. We're way under strength. We've seen what's happening. Yeah. We've talked about different um, stuff, which I've sort of researched and have a really good backing of people I, I deal with, and they've they're all in the same opinion. Where are we going? We're not going forward. What would you? What would you? Think of our chances now if it, if an all-out war came, and you know we were attacked as a as a country, and you know where do you think we stand as a as a force now? Do you think we're because we were not once known, and I, and I was quite proud of the fact, even growing up as a young child, right in the eighties when um, you'd see the Falklands, you know, and, yeah. and everyone was like, everyone was involved, and you know the the, the SAS and the, and the Paris. You know, Goose Green, the lot, they, you know, they were, they, were, they were special forces hitting those yeah. targets and they were doing a really good job. You know, that the whole country was proud of them. What do you think of the soldier in, in this day and age? I know you just briefly spoke about it, but as a force, do you think we could stand up for ourselves? Or do you think it's all now technology? It's all the push of a button? Well, I was used to, you know, um, doing my job, first of all, and being allowed to do it. Um, you know, every now and then you make a mistake, but you're there with the best intentions as an individual. But fighting as a collective, um, you know, as I say, I've been in the Boer soldiers, I've been through the artillery, I've been in the commandos, I've been to the SAS, so I've seen all the different stuff. And I was proud to do what I did, you know, what I did in my time, as were the guys that I work with, um, the ones that are left. And I just think now, we've still got a good special forces, um, and Paris commandos they're all interlinked these days yeah. uh, when it wasn't um, you know we had the SAS we did our job the commandos and Paris did their job now they've got into special forces um, which in my opinion is uh, they do like one selection to put people in and what comes out of that comes out of it in a selection process and they called it SF. <clears throat> and then they would still do a good job, but there's 
the eliteness, in my opinion, um, has gone. I'm not, or gone from what I know it. And now you've got the other ones, everybody mixed in together uh, to try and do the job that they're supposed to do. But with what's going on in the world, I just don't think there's enough. We're sadly, um, and I've seen this documented a hundred times, but nothing seems to get done about it. They thin the army down, then they say we're undermanned. Yeah. <clears throat> How many times have we seen that? <coughs> but that's what they've done. They've thinned it down on purpose, on manpower, realised it's too small, and then some general will stand up and say, our military is too small, we need this, we need that. We've given all the tanks away. We've, you know, Everything now has gone as I know it or knew it. So the first thing is they need to get the back up to strength properly <clears throat> and um, have the military capability that we should have to defend our borders, first of all, and to be part of what was NATO. Um, that seems to have exploded a bit because of whether they like it or not, I'm going to tell you, the, the EU, European Defence Union, which if you notice, <clears throat> they don't mention that. You know, they don't tell you, you know, who's commanding our forces at the moment. Mm. Uh, my belief is um, part of the EDU, European Defence Union, and that's been proven, but they're not very forthcoming in telling you how that, that works, and that needs looking at, <clears throat> because I believe that our forces in the EDU led by Germany. So here we are all those years after the wars and uh, you know the EDU, I'll mention it again, European Defence Union um, and Germany are leading the pack. Where did this, they said they've taken all the tanks. What did they do with them? Mm. They sent them to Germany. So they're sending all the kids to Germany, and then they put the flashes on the soldiers. And I picked it up in the newspaper, told the newspaper about it. Next minute, those flashes are gone because I highlighted it when they were training together the Brits, the Germans, and the others. They all had the same flashes on, but it was picked up on the camera when I picked it up and told the newspapers. So it's there, but nobody wants to tell you. You know, because the veterans, I think, if they find out fully, why are we, why are we under that command? What's wrong with our command? Uh, we've always been in command of ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it's a shame because people are still drawing in the military, be it the Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever. Mm. Um, but it seems to be that the higher the rank now in the, in the military, the less they save back for the troops on the ground. So I think there's a problem. They've been told what to do. The white collar workers are running it. Yeah. You know, so I really think there's a problem. Definitely. It sounds like there's, you know, it needs to be addressed uh, going forward in some areas because it's, yeah, it's, it's like our country is not run or our army is not run by, uh. you know, UK forces. No. No, it never will be because we've no. not got Maggie Thatcher. She was you a know. big. She was a big air old. Yo. She's not the most popular person. No, she's people. not. No, <laughs> she's not in the north. I'm, I'm a northern. I'm from yeah. Carlisle, and I know she's not. And I always say in my presentation and talks, I know she's not that popular. But I'll tell you something. I've not seen anybody deal with the military the way she did in her time yeah. as a prime minister. So what did you see? Because like, you obviously knew her. Yeah. Personally, this was yeah. You. So, what did you see from here that you haven't seen from from any other prime minister? <laughs> In so. my opinion, we haven't had another prime minister. So balls, basically. We've had, yeah. Yeah. We, we haven't had one. Um, I'm still looking now, and I, I won't say what I feel now, but <laughs> um, I might go overboard a little bit. But actually, since Maggie Thatcher went. I haven't seen anybody that can lace her boots, really. 
because she took care of stuff. And if there was an incident, we mattered. Britain mattered. If there was an incident on UK soil, she dealt with it. There was an incident in the Falkland Islands, which I was part of. Mm. She dealt with it. Um, and as, uh, her term in office was when I was serving. So I saw that, and I see now what's going on. I mean, we've got prime ministers who don't last five minutes. No, Quite rightly, I don't know how they got there in the first place, is the answer. I haven't even got a clue who the prime minister is now. That's how much that incest I see. It's all gone. You know, everything... The country seems to... Well, it hasn't gone backwards. It's gone way back. We haven't got anybody who can lead. That's the problem. There's no leaders out there. And if there was, you'd have some of the military, ex-military, leading in certain positions. Yeah. But they keep them away. You know, um, they keep them away. And they put in, you know, people who come um, as politicians, you know, call it what you want. They will say their bid. But that's about it. You don't find... We're very good at being... Um, not being um, proactive we're very good at being reactive when something happens yeah they do or try to say or do something about it but we're not good at being proactive to help stop it happening in the first place because they've got all the intelligence services yeah they've got all the kit and equipment what's the point and you because see, why yeah. wait you know you're waiting for this you wait get in there and deal with it yeah, make see, Britain proud again. You can see that you feel strongly about your roots and yeah. you know your past roots, especially, and that you, you know you you sound ashamed of what we've got going on today. You know, and it's an embarrassment in you know, the government without saying too much about them. It's like you can't say anything without no. someone having. I know that they're like obviously the Tories, Maggie Thatcher and all that, she was hated in Liverpool for whatever reason, mm -hmm. we all know. Um, I was quite young, but whatever, you know, happened back then affected a whole city, as a, you know, so, yeah, that's the only negative. It is, you know, but what are they doing about it? Mm. They sit back and get another prime minister, find faults in the one they've got, get rid of him, and then get another prime minister. And they've been doing that all the time. And it's no different now, right yeah. now, with the one we've got now. Do you, do you believe that, like the prime minister, as the whole, like, like as the as a as the say in what happens with this country as, as a leader, or is he just now sitting round the table, asking other people <laughs> for their how many Guidance, how many no. advisors do they have they have a lot of advisors who can't advise you know how many 20 mm. different advisors maybe 30 and they all get paid for advising somebody who's got a job as the guy who has to make the decision but unfortunately the decisions seem to be not that good and then it goes back to proactive and reactive again it is just it's continuously going round in a circle. It's all fear. But everybody's yeah. frustrated. The public are frustrated. They're on about it every day, you know, with all the, let's go on to the immigration, if you like. You know, we've seen all these people coming in and getting housed and getting fed and getting watered. What about the soldiers on the streets? What about the veterans who haven't got a home? You know, you've got this coronation. Sorry, I beg your pardon. You've got, we've got this... Um, this uh, the King Charles. Yeah, uh, this week they said it's going to cost two hundred and fifty million pounds, uh, but it's going to make a billion pound for the company, uh, for the country. Yeah, great. Well, in my opinion, you know, we keep the pubs open two hours longer. Yeah, and I like a beer. It's an extended piss up. That's where they get the money back. You know, um, keeping people in the pubs and charging five pound a pint. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's it's a fact. You know, it, it's a fact. This is where we are. Um, and in the meantime, you know, the illegal immigrants, migrants, call them whatever you want, they keep coming in in the boats, which could be stopped. 
if I was in charge of it, I'd stop it, you know. Um, and that could be stopped, but they're not. They're paying them to come in. They pay them when they get here. They food and house them in all the camps. They start knocking villages together. I've seen it happen now, where they're going to house these people, okay? Mostly men of fighting age. What's all that about? We've had, yeah, we've had a few uh, reports in Liverpool recently, to be uh, t- to be exact, on um, on young men grooming, you know, young children in the city of Liverpool, yeah. and they they were actually they were actually protesting and setting fires to to them to the police vans, and you know they were they were surrounding this hotel, yeah, where these all men, by the way, you're right, well, well they are all young men. Uh, no females in there, no children, all young men, and they were surrounding this this hotel. It was all over the news. It was all over the papers, and uh, you know the police were trying to stop them from getting you know getting in, in into this hotel. So there was an uproar. Uh, police fans were getting set on fire. There was a little pro- a riots and almost yeah. breaking out. You, know, you don't see it on TV. No. You don't see any news coverage of it. There was no news coverage. It was a little yeah. brief glimpse, but I, they, they, that, this was like a big thing in Liverpool, you know, because there, there, there was there was little videos getting, you know, flying yeah. about. Yeah. From phones. But, but you won't see anything on the mainstream media. Why do you think that is, Rusty? That's quite. You know, because why did he avoid? I think it's because that's why, what. Yeah. Why do you, why do the, the media avoid? Right, um, because sharing they, they're controlled. Like they're controlled. The media controlled everything. I hate them, lad. Right, I hate the journalists. And yeah, you know they control. The media control everything. Yeah, and they can put on there what they want, and they'll put some little, you know, you, you know, something on there which is totally irrelevant to what's going on in the world. But when there's um, an incident that involves others, maybe different races, whatever's going on, when they put that on there, it's taken off straight away. And now, I, you never see it. And I watch all the news channels, you know, it's one thing I do. Uh, I've got my favourites. Al Jazeera. Yeah, I watch Al Jazeera, I watch GB News, I watch Sky News for what a waste of time. But I've watched them, the BBC, I haven't got five minutes for the BBC, but I need to see what they're putting out. So I watch it all, and so I'll tell you, I do. And I find out that all the relevant stuff that's going on doesn't hit the news headlines. Yeah. They keep it away because that's what they want to do. That's why, in my opinion, that's why these people are here. They're letting them in day in and day out they never give you the excuse why they put them in the hotels or military ex-military bases which aren't good enough you know so they give them a four-star hotel or something and pay them more money mm. but what are they really here for you know send them to rwanda they say okay how many aircraft are you going to need to send that amount of people to rwanda it ain't going to happen it's all mouthpieces mm. it just isn't going to happen they're building up in this country. And why all male of fighting age? You've only got to look around the corner to see what you think about it. And in my opinion, it's going to end in trouble. Because it'll be, we'll be outnumbered. The military are really involved in other stuff and they're very small. It leaves a police force that aren't big enough to deal with it, as you've just highlighted. Yeah. Even I never heard of that the other day. Um, <clears throat> so what's it all about? And they're getting paid to do it. Mm. They're getting safe passages across. You yeah, know? Have you ever been called a, like, ra- a racist because of what you've stood for or what you've felt or what you feel? Because that, I know for a fact, right, Rusty, right, when you mention anything around immigrants and, you know... yeah. That kind of topic, all of a sudden, oh, you, you, you're, you're this and you're that. Which I can't be racist because I've worked with all the multinational um, companies that have had 54 countries involved yeah. in my time. But you get it, don't you? You will get it. You'll get people like judging. Yes, like, you know, when, it's like that old saying, I've got a black friend. 
Mm. So it can't be racist. You know that one? You know, well, yeah. And then everyone says, well, <laughs> so you, you can't fucking win because everyone wants you, to play chess with words. Well, I, well that's, that's where the problem lies. Yeah. We haven't got anybody that can stand up and lay the law down and say this is what's going to happen because it, it's got it just nothing doesn't, to do with race. They, they, yeah. they don't know how it works. You know, they come here, um, you know, some of them are hard workers, but in the main, why are they letting all that type of people in? They come over here with all the Gucci phones. As soon as they get off the boats, they've got the phones, they've got everything. Where are they coming from? I think what happened, right, I think the reason why we there was there was a riot and, 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 and all the upheaval in Liverpool not so long ago was because, you know, they weren't getting DBS checked, they weren't any police checks prior to uh, some of these people, well, most of them coming into the country, uh, they weren't getting all the background checks, so we didn't, they didn't know what or who they were, That's what right. offences they'd committed in their country, had they ever yeah. been to prison. With the um, with the on the sex offenders register of any sort, had yeah. he had any offences relating say, to young kids, they didn't know anything. No. So when um, when this was happening, you know, Liverpool as a whole stood up for its for the city and, and went Stood like, together. You know, no, yeah. We need to we need to address this. We need to sort this out. This is we need to know who we be bringing into our country. That's what that's the answers, you know, people were looking for. Well, that, that's correct, isn't it? You know, everybody's got um, people coming into the country. You've only got to look around. America have got loads of people coming in. Yeah. But when they come in like they are now, as you say, they're almost being escorted in, given everything they need, and put into a hotel. Do you feel but as who's like doing any any checks of any type on them? Do you feel as like a little bit of conspiracy going on here? Do you think there's something? There's an agenda. Well, there's a motive. I think there is an agenda. Yeah. I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. Never yeah. have been. Um, Hard facts. But, but I, I'm not. I'm just not. I like to try and get the facts as best I can. Yeah. And, you know, while I can still say my piece, I will. <clears throat> and I think there is a conspiracy theory. Um, not that I believe in it. <clears throat> and I won't call it conspiracy, but... An agenda. I do believe there's an agenda. And I believe that one day... These will be the guys that knock on your door. That's what I believe. And I've believed that for a couple of years now, when I've seen it start. Because there's no other reason, none at all, that that isn't working. I've actually heard, <clears throat> and I can't prove this, by the way, but I'll say it. I've heard that some of these places where they go, that they do get trained. Now, trained in what? I'm not quite sure. But it's very, very coincidental that this all happens mm. and has been happening, has been allowed to happen, been paid to allow it to happen for a long time. Where are the females? Where's the family? Did they just get up one day and walk out and they all met at the boat? I don't think so. I you think feel it goes much deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. And because we're in an armed country... You know, um, we're not <laughs> unprepared is one thing, and unarmed is another. But being both it makes you a bit weak. Yeah. And people will be looking over their shoulder, and I don't blame them. I really don't blame them at all. Yeah, so that's where it all gets messy in society. You know, it's there's a lot of separation. There's always a name, and and and. That, like we, we we talked about a lot of different topics here about uh, the narrative changing, you know, the 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 political correctness of of life in general. We are living <coughs> in a fucked up society well, in this day and age, and it's confusing the life out of me. And I'm thinking, take me back to the fucking seventies, eighties when I was a young kid, right? And I could just run out into the street, and not my mum wouldn't have to worry about me. You know, I could go spend all day out in the fucking woods, fucking. It's the same. Playing I, out and... I did the you same. Know, now, now it's like we're, we're either glued to our phones, you know, shell it tape to the fucking TV, you know, with... Um, <laughs> it's a fact. It is, yeah. It's a fact, you know. Um, it's an addiction as well. It's like, it's it's temptation and it's it's not about... It's it's never about like socially interacting now physically with another person. It's more about like what we can offer on social media. And I'm, you know, hands up, I can be guilty because that's, 
the world we live in now. You know, but it's like I, I sometimes sit at home and reflect and think, I don't fucking really like this. No more. Well, the thing is, Billy, that that that's the way it's been going, you know, and um, the further it goes, the deeper in everybody gets. But you can't tell me that if we go back just to the last conversation, that if we wanted to stop people coming into this country, you can't tell me that we can't do that. We're an island, uh. first of all, you know. Um, but it's still the same where you've got the gangs and cliques where they put them. Yeah. And, you know, they're all living in, let's say, all, but nine times out of ten, um, they all get put into the same hotel and stuff, all, all these guys. <clears throat> what are they doing? You know, what are they doing together? Um, you know, um, what goes on? Why? They don't, they do spread them out. But what is the reason for it all? Mm. And that was the bit that um, I've heard some really good stories on it. But as I say, I'm not a conspiracist, so I won't even go down the lines. But the fact is, it's for a reason. And they can blame. We, 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 we've all got a telephone. You know, they've put the test together the other day so they can check where everybody is. You know, we tell them that it's an emergency. Everybody will go control. They're controlling everybody. You know, and that, that is actually what I believe in. Yeah, it's freaky Con that, isn't it? Control, yeah. control, control. You know, uh, we we're talking about it on the motorway today, 50 mile an hour. What's a 50 mile an hour here for? <coughs> You're on a motorway, yeah. isn't it? Um, <laughs> 70 mile, 50 mile, 20 mile, yeah. We conform it, to society's expectations, and I, I'll tell you something. People don't ask questions. No. What they do is they get told something, like at school, ah, obedience, sheep, sheep. I'll just follow them, and that's what they do. It's a sheep mentality. Here's a question for you, right? And I heard this, and it 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 made complete sense to me. Early hours in the morning, you pull up at a set of traffic lights, right? You'll still stop. There'll be a, there won't be a car around for miles, right? And you'll wait for that light to change to green before you go even though yeah so this so that that's how obedient we become well it is that it's force fed into you now if the youngsters are force fed it they'll grow up knowing about that yeah. the people like us that want rid of you know which is what they want they want rid of us and then they can control the people coming through because they won't know any better because um there's a number of reasons for that. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> but the fact is, Billy, really, that when they do that, they're looking way down the line in time, time and distance. It's not going to happen tomorrow. You bet your life in a couple of years' time, you know, that, you know, doing away with military guys and putting in robots to do the job. It's all the same. It's controlling everybody. Mm. And when they've got control, that's when it's going to be dangerous. Yeah. Because, you know, they tell them to do one thing, they go and do it. They tell them to do another thing, they go and do it. And because you, you just watch them walking down the street, you know, they're like robots. They haven't got a care in the world. Off they go. You know, that's it. And that happens. And that's what's being force-fed. Yeah. And that's my opinion anyway. No. And, um, you know, I think it's totally wrong. You know, it's all to do. We've got another time sometime with 5G and all the rest of it. Everybody thinks it's for computers or not. It's got nothing to do with that. You know, it's all helping to control, control what you do. Control. Every part of it is to do with that. Mm. You know, all these new lampposts that are up. And I've seen them, and they're, they're quite, they're quite um, they've overwhelming. Got, and they've all got aerials, aerials in them. They've all got aerials. Have you ever seen anybody erecting those posts? No, ever, mate. They just you know what? Up, I, haven't. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. So I, I was driving down the motorway the other day, or the, by the highway, and then boom, 
Where did that come from? That's right. So, who's why? Why? It's a network. It's a network, you know, and the network is to track and trace, if you like. They're going to know wherever you are, they're going to know. There's no question about that. We just come back from the States. We pointed out the same things in the States, and some of the guys said the same story. Yeah, because you wouldn't even know that they were erecting these. No. Post, so you wouldn't be prepared to be looking. They're all them. over the place. Yeah, and they're about twenty-five meters apart. A lot of them. Yeah, and the, the reason being is because the five G has to have a distance of. Yeah. Yeah. Be, because they work at something like two point six gigs. Yeah. No, sorry, sixty, sixty gigahertz. I don't think it makes your phone 6. any faster. It, it doesn't make it any faster. No. If you look on your phone, probably, and well, me, I, I you won't phone. even have five G on there. I have. This is quite odd because. Have you got an aerial in there that says 5G works? Yeah. You see that? Does that just come on? That, is, that's a brand new phone, right? And it was 4G prior. Yeah. And then I said to him, Oh, well, it, now, now they might have put the aerials in, but we stripped a phone down. Yeah. Um, that said, said it was 5G. So that says 5G, you know. But it had a 5G, but it didn't have an aerial inside the phone. No. <laughs> and, but it didn't show 5G on the thing either. Yeah. So it's control. Yeah. Everything is control. What are your thoughts? I mean, this is going completely off topic, but it's like sort of similar, kind of um, similar stuff to yourself. David Icke. David Icke. Because he's a big um, one, isn't he? The likes of Katie Hopkins and David Icke. I'll, t- I'll tell you what I know about David Icke. Right. Years ago, I met him. You know, he used to play in goals for Hereford United, goalkeeper. Oh, yeah. Right. So, he didn't last long. He moved on. But I met him once, and I thought, wow, you know, (laughs) he knocked me back a bit. I heard him speaking and people talking about him. I didn't know the guy. Um, So, I thought he was a bit out of it. But actually now, I think he's been on the right lines all the time. But he dedicated himself to that. You know, I was still in the military then when I, all those years ago. So I did different. But I do think that some of the stuff he's come up with, yeah, it's ruffled a lot of feathers. And I think when you do that, you're generally on the right lines. And I think that, um, well, some of it seems zany, if you like, we call it what you want. That I do believe that... Yeah, I think some of the stuff he comes out with is pretty much, and not only that, I've heard that from some of the people that I know yeah. that have thought the same in the early stages. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I think because there's there's only two people in the UK like Ian that are like we've got a big platform that stands up for what they believe in, and that's yeah. Katie Hopkins yeah. and David Icke. Yeah. Now it's like it's it's it's, it's crazy because you know, you've got a male and a female. Yeah. You know, and David's years ago, like you said, you could talk about the fucking lizards, and you think that's he's he's fucking away with the fucking fairies, this fella. You know what I mean? When he's talking <laughs> like that. Yeah, but I thought then, the same. Yeah, but then he talks a lot on a, a lot of other stuff because I don't see what the government or what people say for granted. I'm like yourself. I like to research. I like to have a look into things um, and form my own opinion. Right, and, and, and form your own facts and think, okay, so there's the there's the evidence based on that. Right? Yeah. Because I'm not listening to what you tell me. No, yeah. I'm the same because it's, they're, they're all first-class liars. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you something, I didn't get a jab, right? I'll tell you why, right? and I never will, right? Because something within me internally told me that there was something not right about this. I was thinking, yeah. I'm not getting that, right? And I was getting text messages Right, of the NHS saying I'm in a vulnerable category, you need to come to this this place and get these jobs. And I was like, I feel pressured here. Is it going somewhere? <laughs> right, I'm getting pings on my phone, bing, bing, bing. You know, time's running out. I was like, Really? Yeah. So I had like a, like a list, a, like a long list of like text messages of the NHS saying you need to get it, you're vulnerable, you're vulnerable. Get, 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 get get to this early on, get to this on this date. And I was like, I never went to any of them. I never will. Never, and I haven't, I'm not asked. You know what I mean? Um, 
I just felt I put a lot of stuff in my body willingly, but <laughs> when it's like being forced and told I need to, then that you know that was my that's my opinion. I, I don't, uh, you know, um, I say everybody's different, but I, I do think at the time they were trying to force feed everybody, um, which isn't a good idea. No, because it's scary. Um, but I, I do know people like yourself. I do know that the messages that they got um, <clears throat> weren't quite, maybe not quite as aggressive. Yeah. But certainly um, letters telling you yeah. appointments and then, um, you know, you need this, you've got to have that. But then they would pass it on to somebody else who'd have the same message. Yeah. Uh, and somebody else might have the same message. So it was almost Genetic. like they picked a whole load of numbers out yeah. and sent them off, you know. Um, so I think they all had messages. But I think it's, you know, whatever happens at the time happens. Yeah. And But that, that that was quite strong. And generally aimed at, you know, the other 50s. <laughs> yeah. um, because when, when I think about it, they, you know, when I, when I go back in time and watch what I watched and made my mind up, they wanted rid, uh, or you've heard of the Great Reset, I'm sure, mm. um, by 2030. If the world is now, what, 8.6 billion, um, what it is, 8.6 billion people, something like that, how can they possibly get it down to 800 million by 2030. It's a lot of people. <laughs> How can they do that? I'll leave that open to anybody who can answer that question. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, it, I'm sure people will. Yeah, but so, that's, that's by 2030. Now, that's not that far away. No. You know, um, and it is. It's just around the corner if you think about it. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot going on that, like, we're just like... Well, I don't know, and people know, and people have got a feeling and, and an idea, and re, you know, people have researched and had evidence pointed to this. It's, it's, it's this, this, like we've covered a, a lot of topics here because I'm quite, I've quite enjoyed where the, <laughs> where the, where it's gone because it's gone from this to there. But that's how a, a, a podcast should go. Yeah, just be free to be talking about what's going on. What's on your mind? What your thoughts are? What your opinions? What your views? Yeah, and I think you know, there's, it's been, it's been quite um quite a catch the podcast thing because yeah. people who want to they go and listen to it a couple of times if they want. Yeah, they don't have to pay you to listen to it. They don't, you know, um, but they can get a different perspective apart from. The boneheads are in government there, you know, laying the law down and they have no clue what's going on. Yeah. But they have a clue on what the agenda is. But they're not going to tell you no. and me what the agenda is. Not tell us. That ain't going to happen. No. <laughs> right? So we have to have a look at it and say, this is what I think the agenda is. I'm not saying to you, you need to agree with me. You need to agree with me. Now, we've all got our own brain where well, we can still use it. And I think that really gets up their noses yeah. because all of a sudden you've seen all the so-called um, health secretaries and stuff all being hammered now for what they were doing. And long may it continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's a question before we finish. I think we've covered a lot there. A, a friend of mine I spoke to last night, he said, do you ask Rusty, does you know a guy called John Steadman? Who? John Steadman. Have you ever met him? What is he? Just just in case. It's not a name that's sprung to my no, mind. I can't even think of one, but I just thought of that. Sportsman. Well. I think he was sure to do with... I can't remember. Right, Dean, I'm sorry about this, lad. I forgot. But <laughs> I can't remember the name. <laughs> but um, I'll try and find out for you. Just, what, sorry? I'll try and find out for you. Here he is. Yeah, just... Um, it's not a name that springs straight to mind. I yeah. do know a Stedman. Sure, he said he was... Uh, he used to be he, a footballer in the army. Uh, Things that David, pe- that was Davy. <coughs> it's not the same one. Possibly we'll find out. I'm just, I'm just asking for a friend. <coughs> so these are Rusty's books, the regiment, fifteen years in the SAS by Rusty Fairman. This is go go go, starring 
Jamie Bell. I've yeah. seen it. Six days. Brilliant. <laughs> six I've seen, days. Yeah, the SAS Iranian Embassy sees it's a true story. So you can get these both on Amazon. Um, you better off going to my website. So just so this oh, is, you can get them off Amazon. Yeah, but you can get them on your website, which is www.rustyhashfamin.com. Yeah, and you can get you can get every you got t-shirts it's, on it, there. The t-shirts are coming right now um, because I was asked for them, so we're going to put them on there. The brand the, really the website's cool. only been up now; it's completely redone. It's been up there what two and a half weeks. So everything is on there, and there's more to come. I was having a look at it last night. I don't yeah. know if, that, if that's a new one. To be fair, the what the, the the website last night. I was having a little look. It was like there was like um, a synopsis about yourself again. No, uh, there's a new one up. Is there a new one up? Uh, which one did you get, Billy? Uh, <laughs> it was there yesterday because I saw it. <laughs> I know. I know. I So it yes. might have just be the. Um, it was down. Um, it was down here somewhere. I'll find it. Yeah, but it was just popped all up. So it was all about this one. This so, one. So what's this? Yeah, one? that's a new one. Is this? Yes, yeah, so I was reading this yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a little it, look it's at this. It, it's slightly different on there. You can imagine. Yeah. Than the one on the um, desktop. So they've tailored the one on the desktop to this. So this when did this one go up? When did this go two weeks ago? What? Two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, the the old one, Billy, is... Are you in this one? Yeah, she is, yeah. Ah, there you are, girl. Hey. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Billy said, are you on there? <laughs> That's you. You look very official with that one. <laughs> this is Rusty's partner in the background. You come along to support him. Is there anything you'd like to add, Rusty? Because this is your podcast, and if there's anything that we haven't... COVID, then yeah, I, a, the, the, I could go on for quite a long time on different subjects, um, especially when you go into the the real ones that are going to get them backbiting, you know. Yeah. Within, but at the moment, uh, no, it's um, nice to get the invite back. Um, we can we can always get a, another one going because I'd like to see what the comments are on this one. Yeah, no, and then people yeah, say, "Well, we like to listen to that. We like to listen to this." Why don't you ask them to ask me or ask you? And you asked me what we can talk about we haven't talked about. Yeah, because we've got loads of stuff that I can talk about, don't I? Mm -hmm. And um, it might be something that they could give to you and you say, ah. Oh, well, yeah. It. If there's anything that you'd it's like us to speak about, it, yeah. put it down in the comment section and we can yeah. always cover that one Yeah. on, on the next occasion yeah. because it's always been, it's always, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. I've always get excited when you come up and think, <laughs> you know, it's nice to, to see uh, those yeah. teeth. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, just say thanks to everybody who will hopefully listen. Um, comments, yeah. Website, take a good look at the website. It's taken a while to get it together, but it's brand new. And uh, there's more stuff to come on it. I'll put all the descriptions within the link as well. So when you look at the description, you can find all your websites. You can just yeah, link onto it. Yeah. That won't be a problem. Any other stuff that you want me to add to that, just, just send me a via message and I'll put it up there. Yeah. We'll, we'll think of maybe something. When would, do you see this going out? Billy? I'd say in the next couple of weeks. Three weeks? Yeah, three Four weeks. Okay. Three weeks. All right, give us a chance, mate. And with that, we'll sort those. All right, mate. Thanks very much.